resources are allocated. So I, I'm just going to be honest. I am about the people that are suffering the most. And that's who I'll be representing. Um, and that's who I'll be serving. Although I, I will be nice to all of the folks in the other parts of the county. Um, and I will be there to serve them and serve them well. But my focus will be on the folks that have been voiceless, that have been unfairly funded, that have been under-resourced, and that have been poorly paid. And that is where my focus is, is going to be in this race. And that is where most of the Democrats live. That's where most of the Democrats live, in that part of Delaware County and in, and in Philadelphia. And so, with, with all due respect to Upper Providence and Swarthmore and Nether Providence and um, Chadsford and Thornberry, where there's mostly Republicans um, with some Democrats, they're doing just fine. They're doing really just fine. They need very, very few services. And I will provide those services, but my focus will definitely be on those who have suffered the most for so long without a voice. I will be a champion for them. Larry Arana, uh, the same question, uh, two minutes to you. Again, the tale of two cities, the tale of two parts of the day. Well, I, I think as, as Margo said, I think a lot, a lot of that uh, has been overplayed. I, I was kind of embarrassed by the Delaware County Democratic Committee overplaying that so much, uh, fearing uh, that, gosh, someone from Philadelphia might be our congressperson. I don't give a rip if someone from Philadelphia is our congressperson, when, even though 80% of the district is, is Delaware County, not from Delaware County. I care that the uh, candidate is progressive, and each one of us is progressive, and every one of these candidates is a tremendous improvement over our current, current congressperson. Uh, so uh, I agree with what Margo said. I became a teacher to solve the problem that uh, I think it's tremendous injustice, it's unconstitutional, that where I went to school, where I benefited the public school system in Hanford is fully funded. As Margo said, Radnor, Lower Marion are fully funded. And where I teach is incredibly underfunded. For 15 years, I've taught in a tremendously underfunded district. I didn't have a raise for six years. I didn't have a contract for five years. I buy my own paper. I buy my students' books. Uh, so it, it's, it's uh, absolutely unconstitutional. We need equal funding of education from Chester to Radnor, from South Philadelphia to Haverford, and throughout the country. Uh, we need to stop relying on property tax as the major funding source of education. We, the states have to pull their weight, and, and the federal government has to step in and even the playing field. So that's, that's number one. There's also other uh, uh, ways that discrimination is continued in this country 50 years after the assassination of Dr. King. We have doctors who refuse to accept Medicaid. That's right. a form of discrimination against the poor. We have landlords who refuse to take Section 8 vouchers. Uh, and that's legal. This is legalized discrimination against the poor. Section 8 prevents homelessness, and people are allowed to refuse to pay. It's discrimination against, against the poor, and it causes homelessness. We have many forms of unconstitutional discrimination. All these years later, we have a long way to go. That's who I'm running for. And pay, campaign finance reform is a big part of it. I have, to, I have not been holding any special interest, and uh, no one has bought me. And when, once you're bought, someone owns you. You're no longer a representative. That's right. Molly Sheehan, same question to you about the tail.